I'm going to take you through a couple of different techniques that you can use to generate a presentation style drawing using completely only Revit tools. Now if you wanted a hand rendered finish, I would strongly recommend exporting that drawing. I'd pair all of this back so I'd take away all of the information I didn't want by hiding it and then I'd go up to the big blue R and export as down here, image and animation, an image as high a resolution as I could physically deal with or I would create a PDF file if I was using Adobe because you can bring that straight in. So what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to touch this first floor plan, I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to right click, duplicate the view. Now duplicate with detailing means that it will take in the dimensions and the annotation and the tags. I don't want that. It's going to be more effort to delete it than it is to add that information in. So I'm just going to duplicate the view. I've got some site information. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time turning that off. I want, off, I want the sections off. I want, even though these aren't going to print, I want them to be removed. I want little things like uh, the driveway, the property boundary, all of those things off. So I'm just going to do those. I'll do the first one. I'm going to right click, hide in view. Now elements means whatever I've got selected. Category means all instances of it. So I'm just going to go around and do that. Let me just put you on pause for a second. Now that I've hidden all of those, got a fairly clean looking drawing and a place to start. I'm coming down here and I'm making sure that the scale is set to whatever scale I'd like it to be at. And I'm going to change my detail view to coarse. What that will do is fill in all of these walls with a solid patch. And if I wanted to, I would go back and I would adjust what that solid patch looks like. If I wanted it to be a charcoal or maybe a colour that suits, I want to do something that tied in with everything else. And you can see that that information is available in the wall type. See how I've selected the wall, edit type, and if I wanted to, this coarse scale fill colour, so remember that's what I just changed down here, I can change, I'm just going to make that obvious. Okay, now I do also need to do that for every wall type. So if that was the look I was going for, that's how I would go about it. However, I'm happy with just a simple solid black line. And I'm going to use a couple more techniques to start to make this look good. Before I do though, I'm going back into my first floor original and I'm just going to right click here and I'm going to go select all instances visible in view. So theoretically, all of my room names, which are the only thing that I've got in this view at 3.5 millimeters, will be the room names, are selected. And I'm going to copy the clipboard and coming back to my first floor plan and in modify, paste, align to current view. So I've got a good example it. on the screen here of a nice simple paired back presentation. There's not a, there should be a few dimensions, few overall dimensions to help us understand the proportions of the shop. However, the information doesn't have arrows to it in this situation. It's pulled off to the side and explained, and they've used coding to help us pull that information over here to the side. So the drawing's not cluttered. It's simple. It's easy to read. That's exactly what the presentation style floor plan should be. So we're very close to that bar the information down the side. Back in Revit, I'm just going to rename. I've just right-clicked to the first floor presentation. All right, so that's a duplicate. It doesn't affect the levels and any information that I do as far as modelling is concerned, removing windows, all of that, would automatically update in these other views. The only thing that I'm changing is the way this view looks and the annotation and the dimensions that will appear on it. I'm going to this drawing now. You can see it's a, this one is actually hand-rendered, but we're going to try very hard to mimic it. I've got a sketchy lines look, I use the sketchy lines because it is sketch, we're going to recreate the sketchy lines look, it's black and white and you can see here that there's just this pop of colour that's been repeated between the logo and this one item. So here it is again, it's just more subtle. So I'm going to try and mimic that to a degree 
in this floor plan and hopefully you get the gist and be able to replicate it. So it is a hidden line drawing. I'll change that back to medium because that allows... Actually, no, I won't. I'm going to go coarse. And I would spend a little bit of time editing this coarse scale fill colour. Now, I'm not going to set it to white. I'm going to set it to just a smidge off-white. You find that if it is white, white and black are interchangeable. Revit will pick up the background and decide which one it needs to be. So off-white operates in a completely different way. So I've just pulled that back a little bit. And however, that does mean that I'm going to have to go around and do that to the remainder of the wall. So I'm just going to do that now. Looking at the drawing and then popping back and looking at this one, there's a very subtle floor hatch over the edge and you'll notice that the floor hatch only sort of starts in the corners and actually almost dissipates by the middle. Rather than add a floor hatch to my material, which will show up in the entire house, I'd rather do something very similar and I'm going to use region fills. You see a bit of line here, that's because this is actually the existing and that's the new. However, in this new presentation, I want to just indicate the way the whole house is going to look when it's finished. So using the command LW, there is no little tool up here for that. LW stands for line weight. You see invisible lines is an option. It overrides the look of this line in this view only. So I'm just rubbing that particular line out. And if I wanted, I might go through and here we go, I've got another one up here. No, that's actually the line of the existing house. So I'm just hiding that. So rather than create a floor hatch for the entire house, if I come up to annotate, I'm going to create a filled region. Edit type, duplicate. Now a filled region is made up of two elements. It's made up of lines and it's made up of a hatch. I'm going to call it floor hatch timber. I want, I need to think about whether I want the background to be obscured. It actually doesn't make any difference, so I'm not going to change it. I want it to be quite a subtle, I don't know if that's too light, quite a subtle grey hatch. I don't want it to be overpowering. I just want to give the design intent of the floor. Now with the fill pattern, I want to make sure it's modelled so that it actually is to scale of the size of the floorboards. And I'm going to create a new one because there's not one there for me to choose. They're actually fairly 100 millimetres. And the angle is zero. And the spacing is 100. So that's what model means. Model means that they'll be perfectly to scale. All right, now all I've got left to do is to draw it in. So I won't do a beautiful job today. I'll do a quite good job today. I'm going to use invisible lines and a combination of some thin lines because I'm worried if I put an invisible line over the top it will obscure it. Now I'm coming up this far. Now remember you need to add your own touches to this. I'm going to use a spline making sure I start and finish on the end point. So it must be a closed loop like everything that we do, like floors and ceilings. It's a closed loop. I'm going to, however, make this particular spline invisible because I want it to look like it just sort of fades off into the floor. So it's a closed loop. I've made those lines fairly thin, 1.8, and we've got that hatch. Okay, so you can see how that's just a very subtle, you can see that I've hidden the door now. That's what the region fill does, it obscures everything that's over. So I'm going to cheat and edit my boundary and bring it back here, just so I don't have to do too much work. Okay, and I'm going to use the detail line command, so DL or annotate and detail line, not model line. And we'll just get a nice thin little pen. I'm using, sorry, using my pick lines. 
drawer over the top of that. Just pull that back so you can see I'm just refining the look. I'll get it just right. Now I might actually override the way that deck appears. You can see it's timber throughout the house. I might want that to look slightly different. So I might make those slightly different colours or I might make this a different thickness or I might hide this and add one of those as well. So we've got lots of choices. Now I've now copied this to region. make it look like our finished product the project Sorry, not last. and then would continue to override this information. We're going to pull out the colour and I'm going to change it to sketchy lines. To so to pull out the colour, I need to select the object or objects. Now I don't have anything fancy in this drawing so I'm just using the kitchen bench as an example. By holding down the control key I can select more than one item at once and I'm going to override graphics in view. So what that means is that it's going to change the way this appears, this element appears, in this view only, as opposed to adjusting the way, actually adjusting the bench to appear like that all the time. I'm going to adjust it by element because it's just that one item that I've got. And here are all the things that I can do, and we'll play with a few more of them. For the moment, I want the surface pattern to have a colour and a pattern. The pattern is going to be just a solid fill, so you can see that these are all our pattern choices. And if I wanted something else, you can load in, so that were back in our hatch patterns, you can load in AutoCAD patterns which are free and available to be found on the internet. I'm going to choose a colour. No, don't judge me by my colour, I'm just choosing a quick one and OK. You can see that we can override anything we've got here with just a proper colour, even though this is a hidden line drawing, which is traditionally black and white drawing. Okay, so they could have had a pattern and a colour, or just a solid colour, and we can continue to go from there. Now, I'm going to continue this on and do a couple of others, but I'll do them in a separate tutorial so it doesn't get too long.